Hi, this is Drew Erickson back again talking about money, not math, because I believe almost everyone loves money, but doesn't always realize how different it works than math. Um, and I think it's extremely important that everyone gets personalized information that can affect them and how they plan for their future, not just group think um, herded like cattle into doing what everyone else is doing just because they're doing it. Right. So hopefully this conversation brings you value. As always, my goal is to uh, provide uh, conversation, conversation pieces or questions for you to think about personally to hopefully positively impact your future. So today I am reading and reviewing an article called You May Not Have As Much In Your 401k For Retirement As You Think from marketwatch.com published on the 4th, so two days ago. And so going into the article, um, they basically they start by saying uh, that $100,000 or even $200,000 balance in a 401k may seem like a lofty amount of money, and it is, but it may not mean as much in your retirement as you think. As part of the SECURE Act plan, sponsors will have to show Americans how their account balances translate into monthly income. The new retirement law, which was passed in December, aims to provide investors with a clearer picture about whether or not they're on track to retire. It helps people better understand how much they, they have in their 401k, said Noel, I don't want to say his last name, Abkemeyer, the co chairs person of the American Academy of Actuaries. Lifetime Income Risk Joint Committee. A balance of $100,000 for a married couple could be somewhere around $6,000 a year, he said, or $500 a month. The final monthly figure de depends on a few factors, including how far off retirement is and assumed rates of return on those investments. All right, so I want to pause right here and uh, look at that because I think that's extremely important for us to, to look at. What are they assuming? All right, so because um, to be honest, the if you're taking $100,000, you're essentially assuming that you're and you're pulling 6% or $6,000 a year you're essentially assuming a 6% rate of return every year, 60% safe withdrawal rate. All right, so let me show you what I mean. Hopefully, I'm gonna switch over so you can see my screen here. And I'm gonna walk through a couple of different uh, safe withdrawal rates just for you to consider. All right, so, because I think this is extremely important, and I will say the, the awesome part about this is that we're finally, finally taking a step from only focusing on accumulation and rate of return when it comes to our assets and actually looking at what's it mean for us in retirement, all right? This is what I've been, I guess, ever since I started these conversations and basically my entire career, um, I've talked about or asked the question of what's more important, how much money we have or how much money we can actually spend, right? So we're finally getting to that part of the conversation, but now we have to be very honest and realistic with the assumptions we're making, all right? So here's what they said. They said, hopefully you can see my screen. They said you have a hundred. If you have a hundred thousand dollars, that will pay about six thousand dollars. And I know my handwriting is not great, so if you can't read it, I apologize. Just let me know, and I will uh, let you know what it says while I'm talking about it, right? And so obviously, I'll have to follow up after the fact. Six thousand dollars per year, or five hundred dollars per month. And let me just say, I know my handwriting is bad on paper. When you do it on a screen, it makes it even harder. All right, so what that assumes is they are assuming a 6% safe withdrawal rate. Well, the problem with that is, is if that you're going to assume a 6% safe withdrawal rate, you are basically, you're putting yourself at a very high risk of running out of money before you run out of breath. All right, so I won't go into all the, the math on, on this right uh, today, but basically they that the current economic economists say that you should only be taking about a 3% safe withdrawal rate if you want over a 90% chance of running out of living longer than your money or not running out of money before you run out of breath all right but those numbers all depend on again more assumptions right how long you're going to live in retirement which we don't know um you know what your lifestyle is going to look like all these different things but we have done but just to kind of look at that if we if, historically from like in the 90s to the early 2000s the four percent rule was often thrown around and used so i don't know why they're using six percent in this example but if you take a hundred thousand dollars and you pull four percent each year that is now four thousand dollars per year year right if you take three percent that is 
$3,000 per year. So I just want us to be very clear on how much money are we actually going to be paying ourselves in retirement based off what we're accumulating. Because if you're like most people and you think million dollars, wow, that's a lot of money. Well, a million dollars, just to kind of continue my little chicken scratch here, if you have a million dollars in your retirement account, in a, in a market-driven retirement account, and you only pull 3% per year because you're scared of running out of money before you run out of breath, that's only going to pay you $30,000 per year. Now, maybe that's enough for you, but I think it's important to understand what that actually means. And is it pre-tax? Is it after tax? Is it going to affect our Social Security? Is it going to affect our Medicare costs? You know, how are we drawing it out? How, how risky are our investments? How much money are we actually going to need in retirement? So there's a lot of different questions and things like that going on. So, all right. So let's jump back to the article. I know I hopefully that example helped in going through that. All right. So going back to the article, we are looking at, um, they go on to say, seeing savings as a monthly income allows investors to plan for their futures better. I agree. Most, it should always be about what's it paying us, not what's it say it's worth in your account. Most Americans must draw on numerous sources of income in retirement, such as their own savings, pensions, and social security. But just a lump sum of money, as retirement savers may often see when looking at 401k, 401k statements, gives them a false sense of security, said Tim Walsh, Senior Managing Director of Investing Products for TIA. And I agree, I'm going to say that again. Just a lump sum of money, as retirement savers may often see with their, when looking at 401k statements, gives them a false sense of security. So a lot of people will look at their 401k and be like, wow, I have $500,000 in there. That's a lot of money. But when you break that down, if you use the 3% rule, that's $15,000 a year of income, right? Not that much, depending on your lifestyle and things like that. The benefit of including an estimated monthly income is it reframes how people think about that, Walsh said. They think about what their monthly income will be in retirement, and if it is not going to be enough, then they can make changes to get that monthly income, to get up to the monthly income they need. Under the SECURE Act, sponsors will need to deliver that monthly figure in their annual statements to investors. Uh, we're going to continue on for a little bit down here. That's a little unnecessary information. Um, but basically, the SECURE Act does a, multitude, does a few different things. First, it requires 401k providers and other 403b and things like that to, to also provide projected monthly income amounts, not just a lump sum account value. All right, keep in mind, lump, lump sum of account values are before taxes are accounted for if you're tax deferred savings, but we'll not get into that. So that's good, that's a, that's a good first step. However, I would be wary of what assumptions they're making because again, if they're assuming 6% safe withdrawal rates, they're, they're, they're not assuming you're gonna live in retirement for very long, all right? Or they just are assuming you don't care if you run out of money before you run out of breath. In my opinion, based off the research I've seen. All right, the second thing that they are requiring or that they're doing is they're making it more easily, uh, it, they're making it easier for small business owners to group together to build plans out rather than having to have their own individual plans for their employees. The third thing they're doing is they are making it easier to access annuities within your 401k savings. Now, in annuities, just to be aware of the basic concept of annuity is to, is to if one built correctly, in my opinion, is to generate guaranteed income for life. So it's kind of like building your own personal pension within your account. However, annuities can be great tools when used correctly, but they can be extremely expensive and unnecessary tools when sold improperly or used improperly or built improperly, right? So again, just make sure you're aware of and understanding of how what you're investing into actually works. Don't just buy into something because other people are doing it. So my, we might as well, right? So the last thing they're doing, and this is actually a negative, is the law also eliminates what's called stretch IRAs. All right, stretch IRAs allows, so let's say when I one day pass away, if I have a million dollars and pass it on to my children, or let's say I have one child, his name's Jimmy. Jimmy has basically his entire life to spend down that money that I gave to him, right? Allowing him to avoid huge tax penalties. Well, this, well, the, the, uh, what happens by getting rid of the stretch IRA, the SECURE Act, now forces Jimmy, my hypothetical son, uh, he only gives him 10 years to spend that million dollars. Do you think having 10 years to spend a million dollars on average $100,000 a year 
is going to drastically affect Jimmy's in own income taxes, therefore decreasing the value of me giving him money and increasing the amount of taxes the government gets to take from the hard work and and, uh, and assets that I have accumulated to give on? Well, only you can answer that, I guess. So those are kind of just like the overall thing to think about. In review, the point is I'm, I'm excited that they're finally starting to look at not just the value of your account in a lump sum figure, but instead, how much is it paying you? But I want you to be wary of the assumptions they're making because a 6% safe withdrawal rate is extremely high and risky. All right. And with that, I also hope you are understanding of the different other changes that the Secure Act is making. And overall, I hope this conversation brought you value. Please let me know what you thought by reaching out, you know, commenting, whatever works best for you. And if you like this conversation and it brought you value, please, please, please share it with a friend um, or, you know, tell them about it, whatever works best for you. I hope this, I hope this conversation brought you value and have, you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. And bye. Oh, and last note, how awesome was it to see the Gopher basketball team whoop Wisconsin last night? Not a huge basketball guy, but always great to see a Gopher win. Thanks. Bye.